Thank you, Neil. Not so much about the cricketer, about, about the man and what a man he was. We're joined now by Shane Warren. Shane, you were overseas when uh, Philip passed away, and like everybody else, you would have been in a state of disbelief. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, one of those days, isn't it, where, you know, I think when, you, when I woke up, it was like, no, this can't happen. You know, no, exactly. When you go out, when people go out to play sport, you don't think these sorts of things are going to happen. And I think the way it's captured everybody's imagination, especially the cricket family, I think, you know, we saw Nick Compton, who's just flown over from England, who opened the batting with him uh, at Middlesex. I think it, it really has touched everyone. We said Elton John, I spoke to him and uh, David Furnish the other night when he was playing in Germany. So it's just how far this has got and just, um, you know, what a real tragedy and absolute shock it is for a life that was cut way too short. He was a mischievous guy. He was, uh, you know, he had a cheeky smile and he was good fun. And, you know, a lot of people have said it's a, a good guy has gone and that's true because he was one of the good guys. I heard uh, a whisper that you had to look after him in 2009 and I'm just <laughs> thinking that's a bit dangerous <laughs> to leave anyone under your wing. <laughs> yeah, in 2009, uh, Ashes series in England, uh, I was commentating and um, when he wasn't playing, I was, had to take him out and have a few drinks and just talk to him about all the things about cricket and had to go through these things and introduced him to a few other things as well. And uh, no, he was a really good guy. The tribute and the way in which people have been sending their special message through the bats that they put out with their cap and the message on the bat, to a young kid I heard the other day who scored 37 and walked off the field. Mm. And when asked why, he said, well, there's Philip Hughes's 100 now. I've completed the century for him. Right? It's just been amazing. And I, yeah, it is. And that's, and that's just one of the many stories, Mick. And I think for the teenagers and the young kids to understand this as well, like sometimes a teenager is so distracted with everything else, but everybody has cared about Philip Hughes. It really has touched everyone. Shane, he, he would play, he was such an uncomplicated young yep. man. Um, he, the only thing he loved more, I think, was his Angus cattle. He loved that. Yeah, but he did. He got on the bat fed, he didn't let go of it. He wanted yep. to talk more and more about it, but he played the game and with no complications. It was a free spirit out there. He wasn't boxed in, and, and I thought that was endearing. Yeah, it was, and I think when you see a young a young man like uh, Philip, when he played, he did epitomise Australian cricket. He liked playing the fielding, the green baggy. He was nuggy, he was tough, and but he had that cheeky smile, and I think that's what that's, he epitomised what Australians for. And when he wasn't playing cricket, he was hard to get off the farm. Uh, he was just a really good guy, and um, you now we're all saddened by today. And, um, you know, it's going to be tough for a lot of guys today out there. Aaron Finch was a very good friend of his. Michael Clark, I think, has been outstanding uh, during this being speaking on behalf of the Cricket family and the Hughes family. I think he's been really, really good. It's nice to see him have a bit of a smile on his face. I know it's going to be tough for him to get through today. You see the little boys there with 408. That was Philip Hughes' test number for Australia. So it's not going to be an easy one in, what, probably another 10 minutes or so. Warney, you're very close to Michael Clark. Can I ask you... What's the communication like then this week? How has he got? How has he got through? Yeah, look, I, yeah, I am. You know, we're best friends, and uh, I've been speaking to him or messaging him each day. We've been swapping some messages, and uh, he's been doing it real tough, real yeah. tough. You know, you can imagine it was his little brother, Philip Hughes. He was under Michael's wing, and Michael was trying to help him as wherever he could. So, I'm really, really proud of Michael the way he's handled himself this week, and um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure he's going to be able to get through this without uh, a lot of tears, but uh, let's hope he can get through. It's nice to see a bit of a smile. There hasn't been too many smiles going on. I'm sure that's a bit of nerves before he has to get up and speak. What's blown me away is the togetherness of the cricket family. I know it extends beyond that, but Brian Lara, these yeah. international stars, past players, Sir Richard Hadley are here as well. Uh, did you have a chat with Brian on the way here? Yeah, well, Brian contacted me in, uh, yes, uh, when was it, Monday, and said, are you going to the funeral? I said, yeah, of course. He said, can I try and come in? So, Cricket Australia luckily helped him out as well and um, get on a plane and get up there. He wanted to pay his respects. There's so many people, you know, as you said, Sir Richard Hadley, Nick Compton just flown over by himself from England. Um, so this really has been one of those things that's touched everyone and it's very, very sad. Just finally, very quickly, do you think come next Tuesday, I know it's been very hard for the players, do you think they'll be ready and raring to go, Warney? I understand if, yeah. if a few of them aren't, but do you think it'll come to a point where we need to get out there for Philip? I think it's time to play cricket. I think I think everyone has to pay their respects today and get through this, and I'm sure it's going to be an emotional day for everybody. Already has been this morning. Uh, get through today as best as everybody can tonight, and then it's, I think it's time then to. I think Philip would have wanted the cricket to go on. Yes. I think it's time for the players now to get out there, play some cricket, and you know some people are going to be still a little bit more down in the dumps than others, and some people will be yeah. able to use it as inspiration. But I'm sure getting out there and playing cricket as soon as possible now is the right thing to do. Right, mate.